The year is 2015, and like every other year, MLB orgs are trying their best to come up with a consensus top draft pick that their scouts and management can all agree upon. Very rarely will a selection be agreed upon unanimously, and often the decision will be finalized at the very last second. But for Philly, this year was the year. Unbelievably, they all wanted one guy, who in their eyes was a future franchise player. Cornelius Randolph, the hard-hitting prep phenom out of Griffin, Georgia. But nine years later, the Phillies are led by the two-time MVP Bryce Harper, and Randolph is nowhere to be found. What happened? Hey guys, it's Brett with Baseball Prospect Analysis, and I hope you all are having a great day. Today, we're breaking down Cornelius Randolph and his unfortunately problematic pro career. Before we get into that, I'd like to thank you all for the great support of my first video back. We're at almost 10k views as of today. I did want to mention that nearly 92% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If y'all could hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications, that'd mean the world to me. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Cornelius Randolph was a 6 foot 190 pound shortstop out of Griffin, Georgia, ranked 14th nationally and committed to Clemson. Physically, he had a strong lower half with some room to fill out up top, but was extremely athletic. At short, he utilized his plus lateral agility to cover decent ground and a low 90s arm to throw out his competition. However, he didn't really fit well at the position physically and was certainly not ranked in the top 15 due to his defense. No, Cornelius was ranked so high due to his unicorn of a hit tool. Where many prospects stand out due to their pure power, high exit velos, or in-game production, Randolph had plus or near plus grades in every hitting category from the left side. He possessed a short and lightning quick swing that consistently produced in-game line drives against even national level competition. It was clear his intent was to use the home field every at bat and he did so intelligently, often resulting in high counts and allowed contact after capitalizing on a pitcher's mistake. Overall, he had a very mature approach at the plate which greatly impressed scouts in the stands. Add on the present power and the potential for even more later on, and you have quite a unique prospect in front of you. Where many high schoolers are often judged on their projected ceiling, Cornelius was unique in the fact that his floor was just as exciting. Ceiling-wise, he could develop into a franchise-level 2 or 3 hitter with plus-plus hit and plus power, giving him the ability to hit for average and slug at a big league level. His floor was thought to be a later-in-the-order contact hitter with the ability to drive up counts and produce a high on-base percentage. With this in mind, teams viewed him as a potential quick mover in the minors with a chance to make a big league impact before his 20th birthday. The Phillies saw this vision would end up snagging Randolph with the 10th overall pick in the 2015 draft. By all accounts, they are happy with their selection, with Johnny Almarez, the Philly scouting director, even stating, very rarely do you ever get a consensus from an entire room. There's no doubt we Phillies got a chance to be a hitter in the major leagues that hits for both average and power. Not only did the Phillies flatter Randolph with their words, but also with their wallet, signing him to a $3.2 million contract with incentives that could push the value up to $10 million. This may seem shocking looking back at it, but Philly was convinced they had a future star and wanted no part in losing him during the contract negotiation process. And after his first summer of pro ball, their efforts would have appeared to be somewhat validated. In the Gulf Coast Rookie League, Randolph slashed a 302 average, generating 24 RBIs and 15 doubles over 53 games. He would also boast a strong walk-to-strikeout ratio, posting a 32 in both categories over 212 plate appearances. These numbers wouldn't go without recognition, as in January 2016, Cornelius would be named the Phillies' fifth-best prospect and would secure a spot in the MLB Pipeline Top 100 at number 84 overall. With the expectations high and the pressure mounting, the confident young star was determined to prove himself the upcoming season. Unfortunately, C, as his teammates called him, would base his first bump in the road. To start the 2016 season, Philly would immediately promote Cornelius to full season A Lakewood, a well-deserved promotion. In his first 28 at-bats, he would only produce two hits, resulting in a .071 average to start the season. When questioned about his competence, he explained, In the box, I feel good. I'm seeing pitches early. I'm taking good swings. I'm just not getting the results I want. That's part of baseball. It's going to happen. I'm not too much worried about it. Lakewood manager Sean Williams felt similar, complimenting Randolph on his bat speed, ending with, So it's kind of like looking forward to him getting going and seeing the full package. However, Cornelius never really got going. Throughout the season, he'd battle a nagging shoulder pain that would limit him to only 68 games played. During this time, he'd be drawing back and forth with Philly fans on Twitter, stating, For real, bro, they're acting like I'm 25 and maxed out. Still, even with the injury, Randolph managed to post a .274 average with 12 doubles, 27 RBIs, 26 walks, and 57 strikeouts over 241 at-bats. 
though the stats didn't jump off the page. They're still above average given the situation. Heading into the 2017 season, the pressure to perform had grown even more. Not only did Cornelius have to prove his disappointing 2016 season was due to injury, but now, as a center fielder, he realistically had to outperform a newly drafted first overall pick, Mickey Moniak, for a chance at the bigs in the near future. To rub salt into the wound, the 2017 prospect rankings debuted with Mickey at number 2 and Cornelius at number 10. With excited Philly fans talking on social media about the future of their team, Randolph seemed to be somewhat forgotten. With all that aside, scouts and evaluators did agree on one thing. They all wanted to see a healthy Cornelius Randolph in 2017. The 2017 season would be a time of change for the once highly touted 20-year-old. He would be moved to left field and promoted to high A Clearwater, where his hitting philosophy would alter. The former contact first power will come later lefty had changed his approach to pull everything and swing for the fences. Despite it going against his natural tendencies, the change was warranted as he would need to start posting some impressive slugging numbers to play in left field in today's MLB. The change came with some good and bad. The good, he was able to produce 13 home runs and 55 RBIs and 440 at-bats, proving his power was developing. The bad, he logged 125 strikeouts, dropping his batting average to an unimpressive .250. The season threw scouts for a loop, as they awkwardly tried to grade an evolving mid-level prospect. Some believed if he could get his average back up and continue developing power, he'd have a chance to debut in 2021, where others were not convinced and had basically wrote him off as a minor league lifer. With $3 million invested, the Phillies seemingly with no choice promoted the now 18th ranked prospect to AA Redding for the 2018 season. Despite having a home field well known for its hitter-friendly environment, Cornelius was only able to pony up 5 long balls and 465 at-bats, while also dropping his average down to .242, add on 92 strikeouts, and he have yet another disappointing year. He would follow that season with much of the same in 2019, with a .247 average, 10 dingers, and 102 strikeouts. With back-to-back below-average seasons, Randolph had completely fallen off the Phillies' top prospect list. Though, in 2020, he'd be one of the few minor leaguers given the chance to play due to a partnership the Phillies made with the Australian Baseball League. But just as before, he'd struggle greatly, striking out 19 times in 62 at-bats, pushing just a 210 average with two long balls. The Phillies now had no choice. The soon-to-be 24-year-old prospect was given the sink-or-swim treatment with an undeserved promotion to AAA Lee Valley. There seemed to be two outcomes possible. He'd either struggle, leading to his eventual release, or he'd flourish and earn a spot in the big league roster for 2022. To everyone's surprise, he'd get hot immediately, slashing a 377 with five doubles, four home runs in the first 15 games. This would earn him Player of the Week on and have fans wondering if the Phillies should call him up for his major league debut. But just like in 2017, his hot streak would end due to an injury. On June 5th of 2021, Philly would place Randolph on the disabled list due to a sprained right elbow. He would remain inactive for the majority of the year, except for a short rehab assignment in the FCL. Despite the uptick in value, the Phillies no longer wanted to play the waiting game, resulting in Cornelius selecting for free agency on November 21st of 2021. Then, on March 7th of 2022, the White Sox would sign Randolph to a minor league contract for their AAA Charlotte Knights. An unimpressive spring training would demote him to AA Birmingham, where his struggles would reach an all-time high. In 34 at-bats, he'd strike out 19 times, finishing with a 118 average before ultimately being released. He'd spend the next season and a half bouncing between independent and Mexican professional ball, yielding mixed results. Struggling in Mexico, but doing above average in the American Association. As of January 31st, 2023, he looks to remain on the Kane County Cougars active roster for 2024, despite posting a 167 average in the playoffs. And that's about it when it comes to his story to Date. Now we are at the point in the video where I give my thoughts on what possibly went wrong. First, as always, let me say I hope he's doing well and I wish him nothing but success going forward. In terms of what actually went wrong, there's no one answer, but let me list my three main factors. To start off, defensively, he's put in a tough spot. Before pro ball, he played solely as a shortstop and had a little no experience in the outfield, but immediately upon being drafted, he was switched out of the infield. Personally, I'd like to have seen him at third. I get Scout's reasoning, being that his body and projection didn't really fit well at short, but why move a lifetime infielder to the outfield when his arm was good enough to play third? His lack of relevance defensively certainly played a factor in the Phillies' decision to not call him up. Secondly, his change in approach at the plate greatly diminished his value. Cornelius was never going to be a 4 or 5 cleanup hitter at the pro level. His already plus contact and pitch recognition should have been the main focus throughout his development. He profiled much better as a future 2 or 3 guy with high OBS. It was his switch to left field that made the organization change his development path. Lastly, the pressure and expectations of being a first round pick, especially for the Phillies, certainly got to him. Don't get me wrong, I'm in no way a Philly hater, but 
you have to admit their fans certainly get animated online when it comes to critiquing player struggles. And the fact that he famously clapped back on Twitter certainly didn't bring him any positive media attention. To summarize, I truly believe if Philly let him develop as a line drive first third baseman, he would have had a shot at at least making it to his MLB debut. But hindsight is 2020. And we are all past that. And that's about it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for weekly What Happened videos. We are on pace to hit 3K subs this spring. It'd be awesome if you could help us reach that goal. Lastly, if you have any prospects you'd like me to cover, make sure to comment them below. And as always, I hope you all have a great rest of your day.